so pretty much right after you boot up the game, you're treated with a special little intro. Well, that didn't take long. Whoa, whoa, geez! Whoa, geez! Well, this is definitely the speed one! The speed one definitely worked! Holy crap! Ah! Why is he so fast?! Now, as a quick disclaimer to what I said before, I have actually done a Crash 1 review video in the past, back before I rebranded my channel. However, that was back when I was, well, not very good at reviewing, and as some of you will quickly realize, my thoughts on the game back then haven't quite held up. I mean, it's still really difficult, but never to a cheap state. <laughs> But we'll get there when we get there. Introduce yourself, guest person. Good evening, everybody. My name is Ben, Idio No Ben Donaldson, and tonight I'm going to be co-commentating this stream of Super Mario Sunshine with my friend Ben, with my friend Benjamin Black Mage Mavi Broyer. So Mav, yes. What did I tell you I was going to do? Be polite. I told you I was going to introduce myself in the most polite and formal way I could, and you didn't believe me. No, I didn't. Never underestimate my dedication to a bit. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so as expected, the main hook of LEGO Racers is, of course, the building features. Right from the get-go, you're able to create your own playable characters and build how their car looks. Unfortunately, since I'm using an emulator to record this footage, I didn't have access to my old save file and thus didn't have all the build parts unlocked, so I had to work with the basics. I ended up creating two characters with what I had, Jebediah and Rad Jebediah. All right. Time for Operation Big Wave! We'll surge forward and sweep the enemy away! How absurd! What can that um, rebel do? What? What? How absurd! Yeah, see, it's supposed to be a scripted sequence, and I just, I just died! Just randomly, the game just is like, oh, nope, I guess you're gonna die now. So the first thing of note is that this version was developed by a company called DC Studios. And before you ask, no, it has no connection to DC Comics. That's just a coincidence. Though nine-year-old me believed otherwise, and seeing this made me legitimately think that it'd now be possible for Larry Boy to team up with the Justice League or something. Yes, this was how my nine-year-old brain worked. Though honestly, 23-year-old me would still be down to see this happen. Honestly though, I'm kinda okay with that. It gives each character more of a variety of sounds, so it doesn't get too repetitive or annoying. Not to say that's necessarily the case with Banjo-Kazooie or Ukulele, but admittedly some of the voices in those games do get irritating to hear after a time. Like, personally, when the Isabel got revealed, I wasn't super excited, but at the same time, it's like, given how massively popular Animal Crossing had become. Oh yeah. It made sense remember, that they were gonna add another one. I remember uh, someone posted that, someone posted a tweet, a really wholesome tweet about how like, the Isabel trailer was like the most heightened moment for them in uh, in Smash history. And a bunch of people just started dunking on this person because the because they were like, oh, the trailer's bad. I was like, come on you guys. And I understand that like, the trailer was slow and plotting and not terribly exciting. But, like, for Animal Crossing fans, it was that a was a deal. huge get. Just because people didn't die and it doesn't mean not a good trailer. I mean, did you see Tom Nook afterwards? He looked pretty dead inside. Oh, Tom Nook died on the inside after that at the end of that trailer. Yeah, because he's like, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here since the me. first game, and I'm not in Smash. Yet this dog, who's been in one core game, gets the privilege. He's just sitting there like, they did me so dirty. Just because I'm the most hated character in the series aside from Rossetti, doesn't mean I'm not allowed to be in Smash. I love that recently there's been a trend of people saying that Tom Nook is actually the good guy, because like, he gives you that house for free. Not just that, and... he gives you a job to pay it off. And he lets you pay that debt off interest free, in, in however long you want to take. And when you've paid off the debt, he offers to make your house bigger again, and you can pay off the debt however long you want to take that one. It's like, he is the exact opposite of a greedy capitalist uh, landlord. What Tom, a meanie bee. What a meanie bee. Lame with Lack of Flynn put it best, Tom is the nicest capitalist I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. That's really good, I like that. Ah, so the game was published by Red Wagon Games. I had to do a quick Google search on their other work because I've never actually heard of them, and it doesn't look like they did much beyond this game. They did publish a game based off another one of Rankin Bass's specials though, funny enough. And a bootleg Aladdin racing game? Methinks I'm gonna have to find a copy of that for a future video. 
I hate that that was my immediate reaction to seeing a crappy racing game. There is something truly wrong with me. A lot of these character models just look really off. With special mention going to Cortex and his weird looking mouth. Not just the playable characters. Aku Aku looks royally ticked off at all times, and the characters that appear exclusively in the silhouette guessing game have definitely seen better days. What does this do? Looks like you're next. <laughs> I love when the, the, the security officer just screams after the guard dog is taken down. It's like, oh no. He's like, don't hurt my pupper. I mean, it's an evil pupper, but don't hurt the pupper. That said, I do hope the 3D Clouds has been able to continue on from this, improve their craft, and make something truly special. Wait, what? They made the next game I'm looking at? Oh, what a funny coincidence. Thank you, voice I've never heard before. Alright then, let's see what you've got for us now, 3D Clouds. I'm sorry, what? Huh? The PlayStation Live, yeah, I've used that before. Please tell me you all saw that! Please tell me you all saw that! It's here that we're introduced to colored, platform-triggering buttons that can only be active one at a time, <coughs> as well as locks and keys. What you looking at me like that for? I just had to cough. Each archetype has its own special abilities that allow them to regain more air. Speed characters can grind on rails, flight characters can fly through these rings, and power characters can take out just about any obstacle. The last of which is honestly kind of funny in levels like Metal City and Night Chase. Tired of traffic holding you up? No problem! Punch the cars out of the way! It's even funnier when you realize that Eggman is a power character, and in this game, he doesn't use gadgets to clear his path. No obstacle You got that right. Okay, first off, Vector's mouth animations look hilarious. But that said, I think we're about to get to that line. So with that said... None of this is good, Vector. That's why it's called... There it is! There it is! And I got new posts for your community just as that happens. <laughs> but my favorite inclusions of the character roster are the guest characters from other Namco games. You've got Puka and Figar from Dig Dug, and the Prince from the Katamari games, who sits on air when driving. Also, there's a Devil Pac-Man now. I had to be cursed with this knowledge, now you do too. Seriously, what's with all these plot conveniences so far? What next? Eggman turns out to be the head of Mediotech? What do you mean? I own this company! I was joking! Good luck I, getting back. I've done this glitch so many times. I literally- I- I presented this glitch for a class in school. Bro, really? Yeah, well- That's spectacular. For our, um, our quality assurance class, our very first assignment was we had to do a, uh, a quality assurance write-up. Basically, what, for, for context, what quality assurance write-ups are is when you're actually doing QA for a game and you come across a bug, you have to do a write-up about it and essentially submit it to the developers so that they can deal with it. And you essentially have to test a few times, explain how exactly you did it, how frequent it happens, and how serious of an issue th you think it is as a glitch, like if it's game-breaking or not. And so our, our first assignment for this class is that we had to take three games and then just do three bug write-ups. One of the ones I did was this bug in Mario Sunshine. And for the sake of providing um, more of a, you know, to help, to help emphasize it all, I actually recorded footage of all the bugs myself. This one was fun. I got 100 on that assignment. That's spectacular. Also, despite lacking fingers to hold any of the baking tools, Rudolph's proven to be a shockingly more competent cookie maker than either of these two in the back. She's been rolling the same ball of dough this whole time, and he's continuously slamming down the cookie-shaped cutter at the same spot in his dough. Maybe that's why Santa gets cookies from the children. His elves can't bake to save their lives. That said, I did make the most out of what I had. At the start of my playthrough, I made a fellow named Daryl, but once I had the pieces unlocked, I brought back an old legend from the LEGO Racers days. That's right, Jebediah is back behind the wheel. If you couldn't tell yet, this game puts a large emphasis on giving the player plenty of options with combat. I could definitely feel the DMC influence in that regard, both from that and the letter rankings, which helps make encounters all the more exciting when they pop up, even if you end up getting your butt kicked. Which definitely happened in my case. Quite a bit. Hey, I may have liked the game, but that doesn't necessarily mean I was good at it. Um. Um. 
Um, I've only had Arlo for a day and a half. But if anything happened to him, I would kill everyone in this room and then myself. Anyway, you start the game up, and Larry Boy's tech-savvy butler Alfred shares some apparently very disturbing news. Junior Asparagus was spotted. Actually, you know what? Given Larry Boy nearly died twice as a result of Junior's actions, this is a valid response on Alfred's part. And this game definitely ain't helping with that. Their smug energy here is making me very uncomfortable. Well, actually, except for the orange M&M. He seems more uncomfortable than I am. So yeah, your playable characters are the five colored M&Ms. I end up going with the red M&M for most of my playtime, though, because he's got a cowboy hat, and that's a recurring theme I'm apparently going for in this video now. Also, I have no idea who some of these AI drivers are, but if I ever see one of these in a bag of M&Ms, I'm cutting myself off for life. How many do we got? Oh, jeez, we have so many crates left. Hidden gem in the chase. I'll keep an eye peeled. I feel like I already made it past it, knowing me. Oh, I missed it. Ah, I'm so I'm so upset. Oh, it was right in front of me. Oh man, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna end up looking back at this uh, at this replay, like when the stream is done. I'm gonna see it, and I'm gonna be so mad at myself for missing it. All right, now let's see where this uh, this hidden gem is. Oh, it's right there. Oh my goodness, how did I miss that? I, I... <laughs> how did I miss that? <laughs> oh, I feel so dumb now. So despite the essay's worth of backstory and lore that had been written for the game, Crash 1's story is as simple as you can get. You play as Crash Bandicoot. What's a Bandicoot, you ask? Good question. Anyway, Crash was an ordinary Bandicoot who got mutated by the evil scientists Dr. Neocortex and Dr. Nitrous Brio. Also, what's the entry fee for such a competition? Oh, not much. Just a Chaos Emerald. Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. And yet, despite this very blatant setup for a scheme, Sonic and his friends actually decide to join simply because the thieves from the night before are competing. But what exactly is Eggman really after? Ah, oh, it can't be anything too important. You literally gave him Chaos Emeralds, you morons! <laughs> Alright, Engine. Lead us to victory, Engine. Please. We can do this. Not a little devil. Get my no! No! I think you should go. <sighs> I thought we had something, Engine. I thought we were friends. Eventually, Eggman gets his hands on the majority of the arcs, which, can I just say, he somehow snuck onto Jet's ship, and then into his meeting room, taking the arcs from right in front of Jet, and then leaving without any of the rogues noticing. Why does Eggman always rely on robots when he's clearly a master of tactical espionage? There's so many different parts of the story that could have worked for a minigame compilation like this. The reindeer games, something on the island of misfit toys. Heck, the Wii had plenty of music-based games, why not a minigame based on the elf practice sequence? Actually, on second thought, the lack of a minigame for that scene makes a lot of sense. I mean, after all... WHY WEREN'T YOU AT ELF PRACTICE?! Yes, that was an excuse to use that meme. And no, I don't regret doing so. Given there's some people who enjoy having lives, and some who... <laughs> oh, that's really funny out of context. I didn't even think about that. You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? I know you can! You really hear that? I'm straight I do! Get help. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> I love Cloud. Cloud is great. See, th this is the kind of Cloud I've missed. Again, in the 2000s, there was so much, like, lack of good Our Cloud. Lives are on the line now. All just, you know, moody and whatnot, but they're like, no, he has attitude, he has you sass, it's Merc. great. Actually, funny that I mentioned money, because this next game I've got here, I got for 52 cents. I'm not joking. It was on sale on the Switch eShop for $1.25, and with the use of eShop Gold Points, I got the game's price down to 52 cents. And what game did I manage to snag at such a generous price? Well, none other than All-Star Fruit Racing. Yeah. All-Star Fruit Racing. What, never heard of it? Actually, wait, it wouldn't be in this video if people did. There is one positive to these levels, though. Alfred does some pretty sick flips. Infinite just... Infinite it just is. And it's hilarious. No! Get back here! Oh! 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 Oh god! Oh! Sorry, I'm starting to make Arlo noises. <laughs> I still love that. I still love that video that I, I saw earlier. The uh, the did you, did you watch the uh, Did you watch the Starlink video? Uh, yes, yes, I did. 
So naturally, I bought four. <laughs> but then when I got home, I was just thinking, was that enough? Is that enough? Is that enough, Starling, for Switch starter kits? <laughs> when Arlo suddenly became Scott the Waz. I you bought another one. You brought your entire collection of Starlink starter kits. Never leave home without it. Why? Why? It's a <laughs> <laughs> The game's story focuses on this millionaire fellow known as the Viscount, searching for an all-powerful wish-granting artifact called, and I quote, the Super Big Power Crystal. I wonder how long it took the writers to come up with that name. So the artifact that this guy's looking for, what should we call it? Well, it's a power crystal, but it's super big and can grant wishes. That's perfect! The super big power crystal! Wait, what? Also, I know this is a video game, but this premise makes zero sense with the kind of game this is. How does competing in kart races around Disney World help us find the machine parts? Now, yeah, we appear to get them by winning the races, but then that begs the question, what do any of these people have to gain by taking the machine parts? Actually, even worse, Jiminy himself is playable, so he's actively trying to sabotage our mission! I thought I could trust you, PS1 FMV Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> Heck, Jet Strip has the same voice actor as Sonic, so that doesn't help matters. Though that said, I don't ever recall Sonic being able to do this. 14 years later, and that's still hilarious to watch. Hey there, look at what we got here now. This is what I call a fair price, get it? I gotta hand it to you, kid. You're gonna look pretty sharp. I just hope you do a little better than that suit's last occupant. Don't ask me what happened. What happened, buddy? What happened? Tell me what happened. My what According to Rouge, there should be a database somewhere. All right, let's we run. have to locate the building it's in. There's a lot of ground to cover, so just finding it will be a chore. Are you kidding me? I held right the whole time. And I didn't have enough momentum to go up the hill. Brilliant. And I get it. DreamWorks was trying super hard to push Monsters vs. Aliens as their next big franchise. Definitely didn't work well, but the Monsters vs. Aliens content just sticks out way too much in this game. Honestly, with this content from Shrek and Monsters vs. Aliens, they probably should have just made this a big DreamWorks crossover racer instead. Actually, on second thought, don't do that. And with no other allies remaining, Cortex decides to yoink Crash from his peaceful life with Ta. Wait, who are you? Yeah, during Crash 2's development, Tana was written out of the story, as the executives felt her design wasn't appropriate for a child-friendly game and wanted her redesigned. So she was removed and replaced by a new female lead, Crash's younger sister, Coco. How did Coco come into existence? And how did Coco find Crash? A complete and total mystery. Well, until the flashback tapes in Crash 4. Yep, took them almost my entire lifespan so far to reveal Coco's origins. That's a very weird way of thinking about it. And, as noted in the video title, the Kickstarter page also has a fancy schmancy demo for the game, so you get to actually give the game a try before you choose to back it. A practice I think all future games on Kickstarter should aim to do. The more we can avoid situations like Mind Number 9 again, the better. Try to get Engine to say the line- Oh! Oh, yeah, 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 the, the morality- Whoa! What the heck just happened there? That was weird! That was a very weird glitch. He just went whoosh! Hey, guess what? But bye I didn't even touch him! He just fell to his death. She shrunk me down and took away my costume. Rude. That's a good point, average viewer. Yeah, how dare she remove my hard-earned cosmetics. I paid good money for those. Good in-game money. Not a, not a microtransaction in sight. Putting microtransactions in a single-player game would be dumb, isn't that right, Warner Brothers? Having had no luck in finding the super big power crystal himself, this count decides to gather up the smartest minds to do the work for him in the form of an amazing race-style competition. So he sends out invitations, one of which going to Coco... and Crash. The Viscount's gathering the smartest minds to help him solve puzzles and uncover a lost artifact... and he picked Crash. Excuse me, my good sir. What is wrong with you? Fortunately, Larry Boy reaching the top is enough for the Bad Apple to scurry off in defeat, and then- Ah! I'm starting to see why Alfred said Junior being spotted was disturbing news. Looks like he's having a flashback to the Pie War. So, you know Tifa, right? What? It's not what, what? really my business, but are you guys close? 
Oh my goodness. Is Jesse really trying to say <laughs> truly trying to say, hey, are you a diva thing? Are you single? Sorry, Jesse. But Cloud doesn't know it yet, but but he he's already taken. Yeah, Sonic 06 is a Sonic 06 is an undercooked game. Sonic Forces is a game that the recipe was a failure to begin with. That's a very good analogy. Thank you, I came up with it just now. Hey, I killed the engine ass. Steph just oh my goodness, Steph just brought up the a point that's gonna make you mad. Okay, classic Sonic being shown in the first Forza trailer was as big as a red flag as Palpatine being shown in the Rise of Scott. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I should, Steph, yeah. Steph is 100% right. So with that in mind, it does make me wonder, since RC is sentient, does that mean that the RC cars being used by all the other characters are sentient as well? If so, then the implications of the creepy spider baby toy are even worse, because it looks like a parasite having latched onto a poor RC car as its host. And before anyone asks, yes, I did do a no input run experiment on this game too. And sure enough, yes, you can beat all the minigames by doing absolutely nothing. Not nearly as hilariously embarrassing as when that was the case with Crash Boom Bang, but still, I did get a good laugh of this because of this line here. Ah, all the toys have been delivered on time. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Either that or all these houses had nothing but naughty less children. So how does this adorably charming looking game start off? It started with the destruction of our home. I beg your pardon, what? Cortex tries to defend himself, leading to this really awkwardly delivered line. We've had a few unfortunate setbacks? Almost feels like Clancy Brown was unsure about the choice of warding while recording. They probably should have done another take. The question is, don't you get to name him? Don't you get to name your character or is that a... Uh, nice imagining things. Ah, that's a shame. All right, guys, on that case, um, I need to think of a name for him. All right, well, what what should we name this abomination then? Poltra, Tony the Hawk, Bad, Cold Steel, <laughs> Mistake, Yeth 2. Booster Rooster. No, okay, no, no, we're going with that Booster Rooster. I love it. How long have I been playing? Uh, I've been playing for three and a half hours now. Or almost three and a half hours. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, Silver. Silver, you want me? Okay. No, 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 no. I'm not just gonna say it. <clears throat> the name's Bart's. You're welcome. By the end of my playthrough, though, my go-to vehicle was the large variant, which looked like this. I call it the Mavmobile. Also, yes, the garden gnome on the front is, in fact, wearing shades. Couldn't have it any other way, if you ask me. No joke, there's a lot of exposition in this story, ranging from poetic inscriptions about the Babylonians' history to techno babble from characters who can't even say I woke up without making it needlessly wordy. The sound of the impact woke me from my sleep. Seriously, who talks like that? Now, admittedly, I do think these aren't executed as well as in Crash 2 or 3. For one, while Polar and this new alien thing are both cute, there's no animal riding section with Pura, so this game is an immediate 0 out of 10. I have always been terrified of the fish that will always try to eat you. Because the one in the one on Tiny Huge Island in Mario 64 terrified me. Fair. Then again, growing up, a lot of things in Mario 64 terrified me. I love that game, but a lot of things in it scared me. Why is Mario 4 so Mario 4? Why is Mario 64 such a such a, a hotbed for people's traumas? The funny thing is, is that uh, um, look at the fish. Oh, good, it's stuck. No, um, this game's great. Also, I get that this was their first game, so I don't want to be too harsh about optimization issues, but this game's not the most stable in that regard. The frame rate often chugs a lot, and while playing online with some friends, we came across some... interesting glitches. Also, yes, this game has online. And yes, I got some of my friends, my buddies PJ and Robin, to go on this ride with me. They both didn't like it. Also, also, I'm seriously regretting choosing Hermie for this minigame. Perfect! I'm a dentist! Nice! We also discovered that Larry Boy is, and I quote, quite the gamer. I am so sorry for you, Bumbleberg. I swear if the chicken head cheat worked, I'm gonna laugh hard. <laughs> I had no idea this was a thing! <laughs> And what were the results of my experiments, you may ask? Well, here's the short answer. Yes. 
it is entirely possible for the game to go through an entire board without you putting through a single input. In fact, not only was the game able to complete the first two boards without me doing anything, but I actually managed to come in first place on the second board. Luigi wins mini games by doing absolutely nothing? Child's play. Cortex wins entire matches by doing absolutely nothing. Why do you have someone who is easily distracted as your commander? How about the rookie? Eggman would never expect it. It may even throw him off a little. Good idea. <laughs> you got your orders, rookie. We only have one more day before Eggman's plan is executed. Woo! So let's hustle. Woo! Woo! Booster, are, are, you, are you looking okay? This is Lucky's Tale. Huh, I guess the box lied to me. Why, yes, Eggman, that's absolutely going to protect you from a giant black hole. I'm not sure if this is from hitting your max speed for the first time or hitting a speed of 200 in general. It's pretty inconsistent. But either way, when you get to a certain speed, the game will be sure to notify you. Approaching sound barrier! Approaching sound barrier! Approaching sound barrier! Approaching sound barrier! Like this DJ with her challenge called... Breaking the sound barrier. Approaching sound barrier! You know what? I take it back. This game sucks. And suffering the wrath of Amy. Oh, yeah, she's also in this game. For attacking Eggman while she was being held hostage. Sonic! And that there's the face of someone who's realized how much he regrets his choices. Well, one person brought says Serena Beach is the precursor to Luigi's Mansion 3. <laughs> it's a haunted hotel with King Boo taking over. Oh my god. That... Yeah! You know, what if that was, the, what, what if like some, in, in, what if they said that, like, what if, that was what the if pitch? they did that on purpose? What, was that, what, was, what if that was the pitch? Like, do you think they did that on purpose? Maybe? Like, it seems almost too much of a coincidence. Looking at it from a design point of view, this is something that I love about the game is, again, optional tutorials. <sighs> Give me the one pop whip. Man, I wish I could double how much money I get by drinking. <laughs> that is a very fair point, PJ. Very fair point. But a special mention here goes to the game's rendition of the Water Buffalo song. The grandfather of silly songs. The one that started the whole thing. And this is what it sounds like on a Game Boy Advance. Off with this relatively quiet opening montage and then all of a sudden welcome to race with ryan this is what i get for not liking all-star fruit racing isn't it ow my ears hurt Hello? Hello? Sonic's is so dreamy. amy classic sonic is a child are you kidding me Are you kidding me? I really should have looked down at the chat. I just saw everyone warned me. I should have looked down at the chat at that moment. Oof. And to those wondering if I'm ever going to review Free Riders, well, first off, I don't have an Xbox 360 or Xbox One, let alone a Kinect. And secondly, no. Ah! Oh no! I don't like this anymore! Alright. I got 20 seconds to make it to the end. Crunch! No! No! Crunch! Flip over! Crunch! 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 Oh, I still made it! Oh, I still made it! Hey, I like the looks of this. It seems I got lucky too. No signs of a bad game anywhere. Oh no! All right then, time for level one. Oh, H hi there, Bumble. You uh, 
You don't look too good. And to anyone who might be wondering, my personal favorite costumes were the scorpion-looking ninja outfits, Crash's pirate captain garb, Coco's painter outfit, the Crash Warped biker jackets, I'm not biased at all, what are you talking about? And of course, the retro costumes, because low-poly recreations in modern platformers is a trope I absolutely love. Also, this balloon animal Crash is really cursed and kind of hilarious to watch in cutscenes. Ah, the old Disney Interactive logo. Something oddly nostalgic about seeing this again. I can only hope this is a good sign for what's to come. Oh great, there goes my optimism. In case you didn't know, I am very much not a fan of It's a Small World, so you can imagine how I was feeling when I was pleasantly reminded that the song is the game's main theme. And I hope you don't mind the song, because it plays on literally every menu. Title screen, It's a Small World. Character select screen, It's a Small World. Adventure mode progress screen, It's a Small World. Level select screen, It's a Small World. I haven't even started playing this game and I'm going to lose my mind. Ah, uh, that's, that's gonna miss. Oh, that got him! That somehow got hey. him! That was a good shot! He even tries to figure out how social media works, so he can give Lady Meowmalade some words of encouragement about her next performance. Not gonna lie, there's something oddly adorable about this tyrannical power-mad sorcerer also being a genuinely caring father. Oh, the coins are to... Some characters need coins for their missions to unlock stuff for them. What?! Wait a minute! Wait a minute, what?! This isn't okay! This is not okay! Can I do this to others? No, okay, no, I gotta, I gotta test this now! Oh! <laughs> okay, this is the entire stream now. There we go. I think that's everybody now. I think that's everyone in the park. Now does not have a head. I did it. I saved the world. Oh, this is kind of creepy now. I regret this decision now. Okay, no, we got we got to go back. We got to reset everything. I just I just committed a full-on genocide run just there. Yeah, yeah. That that's a fair point, Ghost Godzilla. This is all your fault. You have no one to blame but yourself. Hey guys, hey guys. Here's the best thing. Does this mean we've gotten rid of chicken pox?